Okay, so this is the second part of this uh, 4.5 Lorance Gen 3 software update video. It's going to focus on uh, most of the GPS features. One thing though I did fail to mention in the last time was in the settings and then sonar menu. They have moved a few things around. Um, so you're going to see the installation menu now has changed a little bit. We've got sonar source and you can also name your source. So you could name it bow unit or console unit. Um, they've also put the fishing mode in here. I tend to like the shallow water mode for most of the fishing I do. And then your transducer types in here as well, like it always has been. But the uh, source and source name can now be selected in here. Um, and your fishing mode is right there. So in addition to the HDS unit, a couple things you will need in order to take advantage of these features is a Navionics Plus or update card. I've already got the card installed into the unit. And then also a smartphone with the Navionics app on it. Now both need to have the current freshest data subscription so you have to have a current Navionics Plus or update card as well as a current um, Navionics app on your phone where you are able to update maps. If your subscription has expired you will have to renew that in order to take advantage of these features. Okay so to get this set up to where we can connect our phone to the unit we just need to go into settings and then go to wireless and uh, we need to go to connect to a wireless hotspot and it'll bring up this menu and uh, this is now connected to my my Wi-Fi at home but what I need to do is uh, change the mode so we want to go from an internal client to an internal access point it'll ask you are you sure hit yes so what this is gonna do is now allow us to connect our phone up to the unit uh, that with the Wi-Fi it's creating we get this menu in the options change back to an access point we're gonna select that it'll change modes note that we disconnected from the uh, Wi-Fi I was connected to and then from there what we can do is on our phone just go to our settings go to Wi-Fi and I've already set this up to connect to it by entering in the password but uh, that's basically what it is you just look for your unit enter in just like you would any other uh, Wi-Fi connection okay so now what we'll do is on our phone we'll just go into our apps open up the Navionics app okay so we have that up and running now and uh, what you want to do is in your menu going into your settings here want to turn on uh, uh, plotter sync which is down here it says it only works with Raymarine and to be perfectly honest I haven't even been able to connect this up um, to where I can transfer my uh, my stored uh, markers and um, and routes and tracks so contacted Lawrence on that no one there could tell me how to do this but apparently this is one of the features so I'll probably uh, do another video on that on how to do that but the one thing I have been able to do get working is the sonar charts uh, live so I'm going to show that to you now so to enable the sonar charts live on the unit it's quite easy what you're going to do is just go down to your overlay here and you're going to see we now have uh, we've always had structure you may have radar or weather down there we're going to select sonar charts live and uh, we also have when we do that sonar chart options here so you can select a minimum depth as well as transparency on that now I've just connected up my ice transducer that's why the unit screen is not responding too well unfortunately the touch units don't work all that well um, when the transducer is not in the water but here you can see I've got a GPS fix and uh, this is just inside my house here but um, as the, the, the depth levels have been changing as I've been raising and lowering the transducer you can see it's drawing the sonar charts live and I'd love to try this out and show it to you on the water but unfortunately we still have some ice so uh, that's basically what you're gonna what you're gonna see now it is nice in the sense that uh, this is working I would really like to be able to figure out how to get my um, my waypoints that are on here and my routes that are on here onto the unit um, but unfortunately haven't been able to do that yet um, so the interface I, I really think needs a little bit of improvement I've used this with Raymarine before and when you connect up to a Raymarine plotter immediately the um, you get a notification on your phone and on the plotter that there has been a connection established and um, it, it's very easy to send stuff over to the unit so I think they uh, they need to do a little bit tweaking on this update still 
to uh, to get that functionality working to where we we know we have a connection now in this case because the sonar charts live is working obviously I do have a connection but some type of notification I think is definitely necessary for this so now one thing to note is when you do get your ability to do the plotter sync um, your your waypoints aren't just going to be loaded into your waypoint list you're going to have to go to your files menu and then onto your Navionics card they're going to load here and then you're going to have to transfer them over just like you would any other waypoint file from another card so that's one thing to keep in mind is it's not going to be just an automatic sync you will have to tell it to go to the Navionics card and then tell it to go to the um, to the unit itself and load them into your waypoint list that's on the unit so another thing you'll notice in this update is under um, chart settings here we have um, our view. We can turn our sonar charts on and off like we've always been able to do. But what we'll have now is actually a sonar charts density layer. And I'll just go out closer into the lake here to show you what that'll do. So that's at very high um, where we're going to have one foot contours. We can go to high, medium, and then low where it basically removes all the contour lines. So this is actually going to be helpful for boaters especially who don't have uh, any mapping on their lakes but there there is coverage on the sonar charts layer like especially in an area like this where you may not want to see that many contours we can now go ahead and reduce them back down to, to a, an area where it's just going to be a little bit easier to navigate but still see the uh, the danger water. One feature that most people are, are looking forward to is the routing function on here where we can do an automatic route and we can go, you know, enter in our two points, you know, which normally driving across uh, or drawing us a line across land isn't going to work. Um, for most navigation, we would have to plot out our course in the water on our own. This will now do it for you based on the information you put in. And the nice thing about Navionics is it really relies on the preferred routes. So here we can see we've got a route right up between the islands to our destination. So if we're going to be able to sync this up with our, our units and uh, send this data over to the, the units, this is going to be awesome for boaters um, and also fishermen who just, you know, maybe be on a, an area that they're unfamiliar or a river system you know, just get you your quickest route to uh, to where you're going. So hopefully Lorance can, uh, you know, let us know how to uh, go ahead and, and transfer all this data over so we can take advantage of all these features. So my overall impressions of this update is they've done a great job um, from the surface clarity uh, changes that they've made to the ability to, to look at the rear sonar on the uh, bow unit and vice versa, um, as well as all the, the functionality with the sonar charts live and uh, sonar charts density layers. Um, they've done a really good job with this update. To me, it really makes the HDS Carbon all that less impressive. Um, I don't really think many people are going to step up to that unless they want that dual uh, chirp feature and the dual core processor, which they say is a little bit faster. And I've done side by side tests on the unit and haven't noticed any speed difference. Um, but you know, you never know. Maybe once you get them onto a, a full network, and uh, the the units won't slow down as much as they have in the past. So. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, doing this update for your HDS Gen 3 models and um, if you're in the market for a carbon or an HDS unit, I'd really recommend looking at the uh, HDS Gen 3 units because they now offer just about everything a, a carbon will. So Lorance has done a good job with this. I think they just need to improve their functionality um, to let us know when our phone and unit are communicating and uh, you know go from there and, and just make the ability to transfer our, our points, our waypoints, our routes, our trails, all that stuff from the app, from the Navionics app, I should say, to the um, Lorance unit.